Anyway, we're moving forward. Four levels of consciousness, page 11. Now, this is uh, a model that I like to introduce because it can give a lot of clarity around a subject that can be very nebulous for people. The entire topic of consciousness has been the subject of debate for many centuries with on one side you have the scientific community where consciousness is a function of biological you know, functioning of the brain. And on the other hand, you have the esoteric community whereby no consciousness is the very metaphysics and the essence of life and, yeah, and we all come from that and it's some universal oneness and let's all hug each other. There's very few models that kind of bridge the gap between that and allow us to understand consciousness in a way that gives us practical yeah, benefit. And while I'm not here to challenge or confuse any model, you're still welcome to walk out of here with anything that you came in with. My role here, my friends, is nothing more than to hold up a mirror to validate how great you are and to give you some choices that allow you to look at it in a different angle. Make sense? So the four levels of consciousness, really it's spurned by a, a question, uh, sorry, a statement by Albert Einstein, who was a pretty smart dude. And he said, we cannot solve our problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And this afternoon, when we get into an introduction into some of the quantum alignment stuff that I'm going to share with you, which I think for many of you will blow your mind, and for others, you'll yeah, not quite know what to make of it. The, um, uh, you'll understand what I mean by levels at a scientific level, in terms of frequency, etc. But for now, I just want to chunk this thing into a, a model that allows us to benefit. Consciousness can be broken into many different levels, and at the advanced levels with the masters and the, the mentorship forum that I teach, we go into 16, 17 different levels. Uh, but I want to chunk them into four right now because it's easy to understand. The brain tends to count one, two, three, many. So I want to keep this quite simple for us so we can all get some, some use out of it. Uh, and that is the uh, four different levels I call. The first one I call is to me, or a victim mode. And the reason I, I call it a victim mode is because it's the mantra of the victim. In other words, I would have the life of my dreams, I would be able to start my own business, I would you know, uh, start to get all of this stuff you're teaching me, but you don't get it. You know, everything happens to me. You know, if you had my parents, you know, if you had my boss, if you, had, you know, if you lived in my country, if you had my history, if you had my story, yada, 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 yada. And it's a very much of a to me mentality. Anybody yeah, uh, know anyone that's ever been in to me at some point? Uh, anyone ever, you know, anyone that may be in the mirror at some point in their life? Yeah, I'll put both hands up. So, to me, as a victim mode, is a, uh, is, is a very limited level of existence. It is the epitome of living life at effect, not at cause. You have to essentially respond and react to circumstances beyond your control, and therefore you have something to blame when shit doesn't happen the way you want it to happen. That's essentially the, the whole life of somebody in to me. Now, that's a pretty boring place to live, pretty disempowering, and is certainly not in line with why you were born. So luckily, there's another level. And that other level is where I would imagine a large majority of this room resides. And that is the level of buy me, or achiever. And the thing with the buy me people, yeah, buy me is great because buy me recognizes that if I'm sitting on the shore waiting for life to send me a bottle with a winning lottery ticket in, yeah, I'm going to be waiting a long time. So I've actually probably got to get in, you know, jump in the river myself, start swimming to where I want to go, and at that point, you know, I'll make it happen. Because if it's going to happen, if I am going to have the life that I want to live, it's going to happen by me. And we start stepping up and taking action and try to create the circumstances that we want rather than hope that they land out of the sky from the Disneyland fairy, which for most people hasn't happened. So, by me as the achiever is yeah, far more productive than sitting in to me. Do you agree? Okay, so, how do you get out of to me and get into by me? Well, something you've got to give up and something you've got to replace it with. First thing you've got to give up is blame. Blame doesn't work anywhere. Blame is the mantra of to me. If you replace blame with personal responsibility, then you have the first steps of being able to get out of victim mode and move forward into achiever mode. And for many people, my friends, that is the pull or the promise and the delivery 
of most of the personal development world. Most personal development is about getting people out of victim and into achiever. That's where most of the self-help books are written for, you know, what genre they're in, what instructions are given, you know, set goals, have persistence, you know, cultivate desire, you can do it. Get off your ass, go make your life on your terms, all that kind of stuff. And it's a far better place to live than at victim. How many people resonate in the sort of buy me mentality right now? Yeah? How many people resonate victim? Probably not many that would come to this seminar because you know, you're going to get excuses taken away for why you can't perform in an empowering way, but even so, the cost of awareness for most people is responsibility. I'll say it again. The cost of awareness is responsibility. In other words, if you become aware of something, then it imposes a responsibility on you to act out that new insight or admit to yourself in the mirror that you're an idiot. Everybody get that? That's why so many people go to the first chapter of the awareness and then they shut down. Smoking, again, is a classic easy example. Most smokers know that they shouldn't smoke. That is the awareness. But they only hold it intellectually because the cost of owning that awareness any deeper imposes a responsibility on them to take action and stop smoking, does it not? Absolutely. So therefore, I just go to the first level, level one, and shut the door. And I can be blissfully ignorant about moving forward for the rest of my life until I get lung cancer. So the cost of awareness is responsibility. Most people stay in to me because the cost of awareness, of knowing that you can design the life that you want in Buy Me, imposes a responsibility to stop bitching about the fact the winning lottery ticket hasn't showed up yet. Make sense? Cool. But there's another level. Because the Buy Me mentality or the Buy Me way of living is pretty exhausting. Anyone else found that? You know, it's getting up early, staying up late, forcing your way through the crowd, elbowing your way to what it is that you want. It's as if life is a supermarket, everything's on sale, there's a big crowd in front of me, I've showed up late and it's on the top shelf, it's overpriced, and I've got to queue up for the checkout. But if I put enough energy, time, and effort in, I can probably get something that looks half like what I want. That's most people in Buy Me. Now again, if you're just coming out of To Me, then Buy Me can be very exciting. It can be very compelling. But I'm sure there's a lot of entrepreneurs here in the room who have experienced way too long in Buy Me and are hoping that there's a different way. And I've got news for you, there is. Very, very much. And the, the, the next level of, let's call it awareness or consciousness, taps into that. But it's so nebulous and so much misinformation in this area that most people have no clue how to actively engage with it which is why I teach a session on it for you guys this afternoon, to give you some practical benefit to go out and make a difference with your life tonight. You're welcome. So, uh, but the next level is through me. And through me as a flow state, it's where things happen, doors open, before you put your hand on the handle. People show up at the right place at the right time. Everything seems to be effortless. Now, hands up, again, own it here, guys. How many people have had experience of that at some point in their life where everything is just in flow? How freaking cool is that? It exists, it's there. It's not a case of circumstance or just having a lucky break. There are scientific principles on how to generate that consciously. But most people do not have the owner's manual on how to do it, so we kind of stumble on, just like the slots in Vegas. Yeah, we have, all of a sudden it shows up, and then it goes, and we wonder how. Yeah, and it comes in many different guises. Yeah, a winning streak. Yeah, I'm on a roll. Yeah, everything's flowing for me right now. Yeah, synchronicity. Yeah, it's the, there's many different language patterns for it. But when you're in flow, how much easier is life? And wow. And then guess what happens? We fall back down, and then we have to start swimming upstream rather than flow with the river. So most people can't rely on it because they don't understand how to make it work. But when you're in through me, life is very different. Very, very different. So, how do you get out of by me, and how do you get into through me? Well, the first thing you must give up in by me, and this is going to freak out those people that have a high need for certainty, 
is you need to give up the need for control. The need for control. How many people just felt they had to go to the bathroom? <laughs> what do you mean the need for control? I have to control everything. My life has to be this way, right? And if it moves half an inch, like, oh my God, quick. No, I have to. Question for you, what actually can you control in life? Yeah, just minus nothing. Now, the other thing is this. Notice I didn't say you've got to give up control. Because for many people, that would drive them to the bathroom. I said give up the need for control, which is another way of saying learn to embrace uncertainty a little higher. If you start to embrace uncertainty, you're taking your death grip off how you think life should look. And allow yourself to flow a little more with the river rather than panic because it winds in a direction that you weren't expecting. Then you start to let go of the by me heart attack lifestyle and start to enter a little more into through me. But you have to give up the need for control and replace it with something else. What do you think you've got to replace it with? Faith, faith's a great word. The, the challenge with faith is that there's a lot of different connotations around it. And I'll show you where faith is useful and where it has its limitation. Faith is very useful in the absence of references. See, belief and the beliefs that we have are built upon references. In other words, I believe something because I've either done it myself or I've seen somebody else do it. Or I've heard that you can do it enough times for me to believe it. And bearing in mind, a belief is nothing more than a feeling of certainty. That's all it is about something. How fast can beliefs change, by the way? Hmm. That fast, in a heartbeat. So a feeling of um, certainty is what is a belief. And the more references you have for that, the more certainty you have, the stronger the belief. So anyone here ever been crazy enough to walk on fire? Okay, the rest of you, we've got a great fun evening. <laughs> Just kidding. So... How many people here have never walked on fire and would be a little bit dubious if I asked, told you that we've got some fun lined up in the car park? You should see the look on your face just right now. Okay, however, if you stood at the front of one of my fire lanes, and I've probably put close to 10,000 people over the coals in the last you know, 15 years, everything from six-year-olds to nine-year-old cancer patients. And, you know, okay, a few have burst into flames, but we won't talk about those. <laughs> But if you had 25 people in front of you that all walked on the fire and celebrated and get burnt, would you have a slight belief shift? Absolutely, because you'd have references for it. So it doesn't have to be yours. It can be other people's references. If you've made a million dollars before, a million pounds before, and then you've lost it, do you have a belief that you can make it again? Because you've already done it. That's why the hardest million to make, they say, is which? Your first, because you're now fighting a limited reference. That's where faith is very useful. See, faith can ex compel you forward in the absence of references. Now, if we take any religious connotation away from the word, that's not what I'm trying to overlay here. But faith in the, in the absence of references can be very useful to compel you to move forward in spite of uh, not having any evidence. But there's a downside with faith as well. Faith has limitations. And that is because faith is nothing more than the flip side to the coin of doubt. Faith and doubt are the same coin, different sides. In other words, if your doubts are higher than your faith, will you move forward? If your faith is higher than your doubts, will you move forward? Absolutely. But that's a pretty temperamental seesaw. One mistimed insight or false evidence or fear or poor self-talk which can come from anywhere, peer group, media. Your faith can suddenly plummet. Yeah, your, your friend turns around and says, you're doing what? Well, that's a stupid idea. No one's going to buy that. What happens to your doubts? Suddenly start rising, especially if you're bought into the good opinion of others. So faith has its limitations. There is another aspect past faith that very few people get to, but it's where most of the transformation lies when it comes to being able to move forward from by me to through me. And that's past belief into and then past faith into knowing. See, knowing is a different kettle of fish. Knowing is separate. 
See, there's no struggle and effort when it comes to knowing. Nothing to defend, nothing to conquer. Instead, it's just a sense of certainty. See, if I let go of this marker right now, I don't believe it'll hit the floor. I don't have faith it'll hit the floor. There's none of that even going on. I just know. Okay? Whole different game. So when I know that I'm going to hit my goals, and I know that the river of life is going to flow in a certain direction, or ultimately end up in a certain place, regardless of the wines and the bends, then I approach life with a very different sense, do I not? Hmm. But very few people can get there, certainly initially, because they don't have that, that journey. Somebody asked me what my favorite documentary was at the last MBS, and I told them it was The Matrix. And the whole journey of Neo is that journey yeah, from belief into faith into knowing. And it's a journey. That's what we're on here. Nobody goes to Tesco's and buys a kilo of knowing. But it can happen quickly depending on how we unblock a lot of the limitations that most of us walked in here with this morning. I'm just making sense. Okay. So, take away the need for control, replace it with trust, faith, or knowing, and you can get into through me. Now, there is another level, and that level, as you can see there on page 11, is as me. As me is, uh, has been a lot of press around what I would call as me over the last sort of decade or so has become somewhat popular in the spiritual circles. And part of that reason for that popularity, I believe, is because it takes away a lot of the religious sort of overlay or denomination, uh, which causes a lot of divisiveness in the world that we live in today, unfortunately. And so ASME is really a, a sense of oneness. It's a sense of connection. It's a sense of uh, being able to, you know, I see myself as you, as me, as the screen, as the floor, as the tree, as the planet, as, as, as. There is no separation. And a lot of the spiritual masters that left us with legacies to follow arrived at that place and taught from it. The challenge is you can only hear from the level you're at. So there's been many levels of misinterpretation through the centuries that have then been represented or misrepresented uh, into what those original teachings were about. But ultimately, ASME is validated at every level of the highest levels of spirituality, which again, the, the term, the the kind of sexy term that's come into uh, uh, focus at the minute, uh, come into favor, is oneness. You know, the oneness movement. And again, with its own level of, of interpretation and, and misrepresentation. But ultimately, that's what it's pointing to. Uh, science also has the state, same state, they call it singularity, they call it uh, interconnectedness, uh, and many different levels of Understanding now at quantum physics will tell you that every single atom in this universe at a physical and metaphysical level is connected to everything else. We kind of know that. Yeah, we can't get a sense of that. But the left brain can't figure that out. So therefore, we tend to discount it and call it different labels. But to get into ASME, what do we need to give up and what do we need to replace it with? First thing we need to do is to give up the illusion of separateness. The illusion of separateness, again. Many different experiments right now in almost every physics lab on the planet will be able to do that for you. You take one atom, you pair it with another atom. You separate those two atoms, the width of the planet. You reverse the polarity on one, and instantaneously, which is a scientific term for faster than the speed of light, the other polarity responds. And that's been validated just about every level of physics right now. See, in the physical world, we're limited through Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, which basically says that nothing that we know of can travel faster than the speed of light. Wow, speed of light. 186,282.4 miles a second. Pretty quick. 669,600,000 miles an hour. That's the limitations of the physical world, and most of us are focused so much on the physical, we forget that we came from a different place. Remember, everything in the physical world is subject to the law of impermanence. So, if we start to understand that everything at the subatomic, i.e. metaphysical level, is connected, and as we put more layers of you know, crap and masks and LinkedIn profiles on top, we tend to forget you know, what the reality is. 
But if we were to give up the illusion of separateness, which we can say we can now validate as an illusion, and replace it with what? Unconditional love. Same message. Every religion, every form of spirituality, everything that makes you feel what it is that you've designed your life around trying to feel more of. I mean, it's staring us in the face, guys. Unconditional love. So if you can move through that, then you can get into a state of as me. Now, it's not somewhere that I spend a lot of time in at all. Yeah, I have glimpses of it. You know, I move in that. I think we all do because it's our natural state. Yeah, but most of the time, most people would very much like to uh, a bit of an owner's manual on how to get into through me because through me is a very different game. By me is tough, leads to gray or thinning hair, missed lunches, and yeah, a lot of struggle and effort. In by me, you can catch the rabbit but it's exhausting and we still don't feel fulfilled and then another white fluffy tail comes out. Yeah, there's, there's so, many, so many aspects to, to why you should focus on getting out of by me and into through me. And again, I've got something for you for that uh, this afternoon.